I began running when I was about 19 um, as a way of, of calming my mind and just as a form of meditation. And then uh, moved to Kona, Hawaii um, when I was in my mid-30s. So uh, I've always been attracted to endurance and things like that. For the first eight years that I lived in Hawaii, uh, I would not go near downtown Kailua, where the Ironman starts and finishes, during Ironman week. Because I knew that the first time I saw that race, it was going to lay claim to me. And I did not want to witness it until I was ready to commit to it. So in 1998, I volunteered uh, on the run course uh, at an aid station. And I went back to the finish line to watch the finish for a while. And I said to myself and to my, um, my family there, I'm going to do this race next year. So my first triathlon was uh, about a month later on Thanksgiving Day, um, a local event run by P-Man, who's quite a legend. Um, and that was the day I joined the Church of Triathlon. I found out about Peasant Man because Ian, who has Finger Lakes Running and Triathlon Company here um, in town, put uh, something on the ITC, the Ithaca Triathlon Club listserv, and said, hey, there's this new race coming out called Peasant Man up in Penn Yen. So I went online and I looked at it and I loved the whole thing. I've done a number of Ironmans in Lake Placid in Hawaii and uh, Brazil, and I've seen a, a degradation in the quality of experience that I would get at some of the venues where they were floating more on the name and not on delivering what I felt was a, was a really good course, uh, great you know energy for the volunteers, good post-race, that kind of thing. And being a local race, since it's in Penyan and I live in Ithaca, um, and just the whole racing out of the dark ages, the steel distance, which is because steel is stronger than, well, some other metals, um, I just really wanted to support that. And uh, so that's what really attracted me to do Peasant Man. Um, I did not really train specifically for Peasant Man. I was not, I mean, the longest bike ride I had done till then was probably at Muscle Man. Um, and the longest run I had done was probably Muscle Man too. Maybe I'd done a 15 mile run. So going there was more of participating and wanting to support the, the you know, the, the inauguration of this event and the, uh, the spirit of it. I love racing in the Finger Lakes. I love living here. It's such a beautiful place. The bike course is a great showcase of that area. There were a lot of um, the Amish out in their horse and buggies on a Sunday morning. And that's like a real kind of like memorable trademark. And I like loop courses, especially if you're not prepared and you're kind of like, you know, under trained or if you're new to, to the distance, these loop courses. So we did four loops of the bike for the full steel distance and the half steel did two loops and the run likewise. So it gives you kind of, it allows you mentally to break things up a little bit into smaller increments and that makes it a little bit more approachable. So I do think that, especially for people who are concerned about doing their first half iron, who are concerned about making a cutoff time, this is the perfect race because you're dealing with no cutoff time for the half. You have as long as you need. The other thing was the whole theme, the, the peasant man theme, the king being knighted, um, all of the playful parts of this, uh, for me, come back to what really turned me on to triathlon, which was P-Man in Hawaii. Um, he's a really amazing guy, and he brings the same kind of degree of play to this sport. In Hawaii, there are 30 slots just for local residents if you can prove that you've been a resident of the state for four years. Um, 
So I began training for Ironman. Didn't have a bike, didn't, didn't know anything about how to train for this at all. Um, and Hawaii Ironman was my fourth triathlon ever. Uh, so in May of 99, I qualified at the local half iron um, and began to ramp up my volume towards doing iron distance. And I just figured that you just kept on escalating the volume and the distance and so forth until you reached the race. I didn't understand about tapering or recovery or adaptation. It was just all about the training, which is the stress. So consequently, uh, seven weeks out from the race, I woke up on a Sunday morning and I honestly thought, I'm going to die. I laid in bed and I cried for like an hour. I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm mortal. It was the first time in my life I'd ever felt that I was mortal. At that time, I was 42 years old. Um, so I made a resolution that if I lived through the event, which I honestly wasn't sure I was going to do, that I was going to write a book and I was going to address the discrepancy between the, uh, the glorious athlete and the ordinary human being. You can't be a glorious athlete if you're not an ordinary human being first. It's really important. And an ordinary human being includes a family and friends that support you in what you're doing. I finished that first event, um, which was a miracle that 35 days leading up, I was walking on a, on a razor. One side of the razor was not recovering enough to make the starting line. The other side of the razor was training enough to make the finish line. And it was not a very um, enjoyable experience, but I did finish and I committed to writing a book and the book became, um, I uh, coined the word Zendurance, which is using mindfulness, using your mental presence to execute each stride and each stroke with absolute efficiency and perfection. And that's not mind over matter, it's mind in matter. And that is that you're, you're allowing the body to think in movement. Um, so the name Zen Man came, uh, I was doing um, the Tupper Lake Tin Man years ago and somebody called me Zen Man at the race and it's stuck ever since then. So my lifetime pursuit is really about what I call kinetic intelligence and that plays into the way in which I approach training as an athlete. Um, most of your conventional training programs, if you, if you have a coach or you work with an online training program, they're always going to be focused on giving you duration and intensity and then recovery. So the duration and intensity are primarily what you're focused on and the way you're measuring the intensity is heart rate or output is energy system training. You're working on training the metabolic, the heart, the lungs, the blood, the ability to burn fat and conserve glycogen and so forth. Yet there's not really that much focus on the technique. So as athletes, we train three systems. We train the metabolic, which is your heart and lungs and your ability to generate and sustain energy output. It is your muscular system and your neural system. And the system that responds and improves the most to training is your neural system. Yet how many training programs actually focus on that? Not very many. Uh, so in my own personal training, I am aware of my training zones, my intensity zones, zone one, two, three, four, five. Um, but the way in which I structure my training, I haven't used a heart rate monitor in probably 12 or 13 years. Um, I don't have power meters. I don't use any GPS, Garmin, nothing. I do everything by feel. But mostly what I focus on is training the neuromuscular. And as an aging athlete, that is the system that will continue to respond and improve throughout the process. 
So the interesting thing to me, the validity of this idea of, of how important neuromuscular training is, as opposed to focusing on energy system training is, you only have to look as far as uh, Hawaii Ironman, where the athletes that win this event, and we're talking the best in the world, who train sometimes way more than just focusing one year ahead, they're five years ahead, and this is gonna be the pinnacle of their, their, you know, their career as an endurance athlete, they peak in their mid-30s. But aerobically, the peak happens somewhere in the young to mid-20s. So granted, the decline for them is slow. They're not like losing a lot of aerobic fitness every year. But by the time they're in their mid-30s, when they're winning Hawaii Ironman, they've already lost some of their aerobic, you know, they've already plateaued and begun to, to um, diminish. What makes up for that and surpasses it is their kinetic intelligence. They've developed more efficiency in their swimming, biking, and running technique. And that comes from the neural system. So for me, this is where the mental aspect comes in. This is not about mind over matter. This is about mind in matter. It's about honoring and, and improving the intelligence of the body, the kinetic intelligence. As far as what I do, my occupation now is I have taken all of this theme of mindful movement and kinetic intelligence and so forth and so on. Um, the two things that I do are I am a master coach for Total Immersion Swim. Uh, so I was trained uh, for TI and um, then started helping Terry, who's the founder, uh, develop methodologies and improve the way in which we're teaching, um, work with product development as well, uh, content. So I, at the same time as I became a TI teacher, and the approach to total immersion as a swim technique is, again, being very mindful of what's going on. When I teach, whether it's the Zendurance Cycling or Total Immersion Swim or just counseling athletes, what I focus on is um, having, is constantly challenging people's perceptive capacity. And that is the path of mastery, is to be relentless about looking at how you're seeing things, what you're seeing, what you're experiencing. I always tell my, my swim, um, uh, students that I am not your coach the water is your coach I am here to challenge you to be more perceptive of what's going on between you and the water I developed Zendurance cycling as the total immersion as the cycling version of total immersion and chi running so it's the cycling companion for those two brands uh, we are now in the process of inaugurating our first triathlon camps that include all three of them together. Uh, so the Zendurance Cycling, and I have a website, ZendurantCycling.com, uh, includes some information for beginners on just how to approach training from a mindful uh, perspective. It also uh, has a lot of information about cycling technique. So. All of these, Qi running, total immersion, and Zendurance, are focused on efficiency, using less energy to move forward. The secret to that is your alliance with gravity. It's your ability to take the pull of gravity and translate it into forward motion. And for an example is if you're running, what you wanna do is lean forward from your ankles tilt your body forward and that momentum, the falling forward, is what moves you forward. Is actually you're falling down but you're, you're constantly falling, you're turning that into falling forward. So I always, I suggest to people that if they've never run a marathon, the secret to running a marathon is just keep falling forward for 42 kilometers without tipping over. As well as the ZendurantCycling.com website, uh, I ha also have a Zendurance Cycling YouTube channel. It has uh, my Total Immersion 
um, swim promo video. I'm swimming in, uh, we shot at very high speed and then slowed it down. So you can look at how swimming occurs from weight shifts. And the Zendurance cycling promo video is on there as well as a lecture that I did with a uh, PT and a surgeon on uh, shoulder injuries and swimming and how to prevent them.